Brady, obviously, we all know how good Nick Dacos is. Cross Archers is back. Josh kicked the last one. Oh. Nick Dacos. Oh, my goodness. Has he got an air of greatness or what? Welcome to Wooden Spoon Data, the 18th best AFL content on YouTube. My name's Woody, and today we're talking about Nick Dacos. Let's get into it. And it opens up again. Guess who? Nick Dacos. In 2022, Nick Dacos exploded onto the AFL scene, leaving Collingwood nufties, haters, and even the most seasoned commentators absolutely speechless. I've been working on a player comparison video using what we've learned from the Stats Creep video. Link in description below if you haven't seen it. But essentially, I'm trying to compare modern players to historical greats. And I came to Nick Dacos, and I've been somewhat stumped. At just 21 years of age, he's already amassed statistics that rival and surpass some of the most revered of AFL legends. So the major question ends up being, could he actually reach the pinnacle of AFL greatness? In this video, we'll dive into Dacos' potential, comparing his early career numbers to that of AFL royalty like Gary Ablett Jr., Chris Judd, and many others, to see if he has what it takes to be the greatest of all time. Never his level of consistency, I mean, his worst game for the season, he's still in their best 10 or 12 players. The players that are producing that level of Consistency. I think you're going back a long time. Yeah. The the Hazelby type of mm. player and the you know the Judds Judd, and, and the, the players who produce such a high level in their first year is not not, not the usual. Paul Hazelby was a gun footballer. In his first game in round one, 2000, he collected 30 disposals and kicked one goal too, earning himself a Rising Star nomination. That narrowly edges out Nick's first performance of just 27 disposals. Nick also wouldn't receive his Rising Star nomination until round three, being beaten by Nick Martin and Jake Bowie. But by Nick's 17th game against Adelaide in Adelaide, he'd collect 40 disposals along with three goals, dragging Collingwood to a five-point victory. That performance alone surpasses Hazelby's highest disposals in a single match and his highest goals tally in a single match. Chris Judd had an equally impressive start to his career, earning a Brownlow in his third season a feat Dacos could still achieve. I think he will win it this year. Let us know if you agree. If not, who do you think will win? But in Judd's entire career, he only averaged more than Nick's first season disposals average of 25.75 four times. Judd never passed Nick's second season average of 31 disposals per match. In fact, Dacos already has four matches over Judd's highest disposals tally. You're in a transition play on the wing and Nick will be next to you and then in the flash of, it feels like five seconds, he's like 150 metres away, and I call it the teleport button. So, how many players have averaged more than Nick in his second year? It's not a long list. Since 1965, only 27 players have had a season in which they averaged more than Nick did in his second season. And only eight players have managed to do that more than once. Two players have done that twice. Matthew Boyd and Clayton Oliver. Four players have done that three times. Matt Crouch, Tom Mitchell, Jackson McRae, and Rory Laird. You might have noticed a trend there. If you want to know why more recent players have achieved this, go back and watch our Stats Creep video. Every player so far has been a leader of their club and at times a leader of the game. The next two players are near the pinnacle of AFL talent, perhaps with different levels of application to the sport. At least one of them has a strong claim for the GO title though. Considering most of you might know who that is, we'll start with the man that has the second most seasons above Nick Dacos's second year average, a fellow Collingwood champion in Dane Swan. From 2010, where he just surpassed Nick's second year average of 31 by 0.54, to three years later in 2013, where he was still managing 31.17, Swan was a major catalyst in propelling his side to a premiership and cemented his spot in history a year later with a Brownlow. Swan accumulated an average of 26.85 disposals per match during his AFL career, which at the time of retirement was the second most behind only Greg Williams at 26.88 disposals. So clearly Dacos is on track to beat that right now, but he'll need to maintain that over the next decade or so. And finally, the one person in AFL history to maintain a higher average than Dacos for a whopping six years, as I'm sure many of you have guessed, Gary Ablett Jr. The eldest son of AFL Hall of Famer, Gary Ablett Sr. Much like Dacos, Gary Ablett Jr. was drafted to Geelong under the father-son rule. He went on to become a dual premiership player, dual Brownlow medalist, three-time AFL Coaches Association Player of the Year winner, four-time Lee Matthews Trophy winner, and eight-time consecutive All-Australian from 2007 to 2014. Gary Ablett is widely regarded as the best midfielder of all time, as evident by holding the most votes in the Brownlow medal at 262 total votes. Surprisingly, Ablett only got 14 votes in his first 100 games. Dacos surpassed that in just 27. 
What drives you as an athlete? Just to get the best out of myself. Whether that's playing one game of AFL footy or 200, I just don't really want to leave any stone unturned. I would have any regrets by the end of my career, so every day it's a day-to-day -day process to make sure I'm better than the day previous. So, is Nick on track for the most Brownlow votes ever? The short answer is yes. At his current average, he would surpass Gary Ablett Jr. in Brownlow votes after 262 home and away matches, and his average will no doubt go up. If he were to maintain last year's average of 28 votes from 20 games or 1.4 Brownlow votes a match, he'll achieve it in another 160 regular season games. That would be round 22, 2030. In other words, he'd be the highest ever Brownlow votes getter in just under seven more years at only 27 years of age. That being said, there are reasons I don't think he'll make it by that time. Obviously there's injury, but the one problem I think he'll start to contend with most over the next few years is voter fatigue. If you're a fan of NBA, you know what this is. The idea tends to be most prevalent in one instance, when a player attempts to win a third consecutive MVP. Why is this happening? It seems unlikely that every player worthy of winning consecutive MVPs would experience a statistical decline in year number three. This is where the idea of voter fatigue comes in. This guy is so important to everything Collingwood do. He's their number one score involvement player. He's their number one disposal player. He, he's 30 a week, uh, he's bankable. Ecos's potential is undeniable, but reaching the heights of AFL immortality, let alone GOAT status, is no easy feat. He'll need to maintain his current level of excellence over the next decade while also navigating the inevitable challenges. Dacos has all the tools to be one of the all-time greats. Injuries, team success and even personal motivation will play a huge role in his legacy. But his statistical dominance, leadership qualities, versatility and general footy IQ have the hallmarks of greatness. However, only time will tell if he can truly surpass the likes of Ablett, Martin, Judd, all the others to cement his place as the AFL GOAT. One thing is for sure though, Nick is a once in a generation talent and his journey will be nothing short of captivating. If you enjoy this channel and want to watch more AFL statistic videos like this, be sure to click the subscribe button to keep up to date. And if you have any suggestions for us, let us know in the comments. Thanks once again. If the trajectory stays the same with what we've seen here, we are witnessing the birth of the greatest ever AFL player to play in the AFL. <laughs> the best player oh, ever. He's oh, dropped the mic. He's dropped the mic. Oh. You didn't have the courage. The best player ever. Yeah, oh, the trajectory. Now, it may ever. not happen. Ever. But if you're looking at the trajectory of what we've seen in the first hey, 30 is, games, is the how evidence old is, he, is there. Oh, is he 20? 20, yep. Oh, so he's, got, he's got a fair bit to learn. I hope Lee Matthews is not listening. <laughs> Hello, Craig. Jeez, you're up and about, I is. was excited for what I've seen <laughs> as, a, as a supporter of another team, but you can't ignore greatness. And what we are seeing, in my view, is greatness. The best player ever!